Um, Dan, when it comes to, I mean, you are the AI expert in this um, conversation. Talk to me a little bit about how sophisticated that we are getting now. What, what are we seeing with these types of emails? Well, you've got to remember that you know AI is literally just amazingly powerful computer information. It's you know, large language models, as they call them, and uh, it just means that they can absorb a huge amount of information, and it can be used for either good or for bad. So, you know, just like in marketing, AI can get you better and better at marketing. Well, sadly, AI and computer information can get you better and better at doing phishing emails, as they're called. PH rather than phishing is in not mm-hmm. with fish but with uh, with a PH, mm-hmm. um, but they can also do much more you know, scandalous things and malicious things. So the amount of information that somebody might have about you because of social media and because of stuff that's online that's readily available means that they can come up with something that's extremely clever. Now, of course, they're not coming up with it. This is the thing: the AI is allowing them to become. 20, 30 times more productive. And so it's no longer going to be the, uh, you know, the, the prince, the Nigerian prince wanting your details or to give you some cash back or whatever. It's going to be much more like, you know, they'll know your personality type. They'll know what's likely to uh, to get you interested in it. And they'll also potentially know some information about, you know, if it's freely available online, about your family and other connections. And so it can, we're almost in this kind of be careful of anything that you read online and email wise. Be double careful of everything now because artificial intelligence allows everyone to become more productive. Sadly, also the bad guys as well as the good. Megan, how can we be how can we be more aware of situations like this? Because I mean oh. it's it's difficult to know what's real and what's not at this point. Yeah, it is really, really difficult. Um it, it's always been difficult, but now like like they say, AI, AI has made it a lot diff- more difficult. And you know, Facebook and Instagram and all that, all your social medias is it, it like is out there for everyone to see. Mm. So my one First recommendation is edit your privacy settings on your social media accounts. Make it a bit harder for people to find that information. Make sure it's private only to your friends. Um, and obviously, main ones I would say, like when you're looking at an efficient email, really check it. Don't don't rush it. Really read it through. Like if if you get one that's my main one, say if you get one that's unexpected and urgent. Like you need a reply right away. They're they're trying to get you a reply right away. That one's a flag. If you're not expecting it, you're not. You shouldn't really go for it. Um, and if if it is something like from I don't know from Amazon, check your Amazon accounts. You you got to be really careful. You've got to check these things through before actually clicking on something. It's difficult, isn't it? Because, as you say, when it comes to um, situations that are urgent, for example, Dan, I mean, I had an email through the other day and it was to change a password because something had been uh, something had been leaked. Um, and it, mm-hmm. was, it was encouraging me saying, change your password now. You, you, someone's trying to access you. It was a particular uh, social media account. So the first thing you do is think, oh, it's a race against time. I've got to get to that place. I've got to change it. What, ha, what are the telltale signs that these things are not genuine, even though if you look at the email, it looks pretty much legit? Well, you know, just as the other caller was saying, it's that tone and that kind of urgency. But also look at things like the domain name. Because it's if, you know if it comes from Amazon.com or HTTPC or these other kind of you know, big domain names, it's not likely to have been uh, to be able to be malicious. However, if it's something like support HSBC dot com, then of course they could just buy that domain name. And so it's the same principle. My, I, the best thing to do, honestly, and I've said the same to my parents, is just discount all of them. Yeah. And then and if you need to, you know, someone will get back to you by phone call and then something else. But the problem you now have, of course, is that even phone calls exactly, now yeah. are, are, can now can now also be bodged. So, mm-hmm. you know, very famously, Joe Biden at the moment, you know, isn't phoning people up. But, uh, but a robocall over in America is phoning people up and, and pretending to be Joe Biden and then telling them not to uh, not to vote in certain things. So we're getting to that level now where it's not just email. It will become phone calls, but it will also become WhatsApp messages as well. And my parents just got one the other day. 
And luckily, because I've trained them to do so, I always say, don't reply to any of them. Do not do anything unless you are 100% sure. I think nowadays it's almost 200% sure. So it's literally just education for people. And now just don't believe things that happen online. We're almost in this post-truth world, which I know is a bit scary for a lot of people. But the reality is it's just like when we, you know, when the car first came out, we've just got to educate people to not run across roads. It's the same principle here. We've just got to be really aware. And you see something like that, actually, that Taylor Swift Swift story with her image oh, yeah. being used um, uh, that tells you how quickly these things can grow well n- not only that but this kind of technology has been around for a very long time so with Taylor Swift that's been around for a long time luckily now X has now got rid of all those images but of course the next thing will be videos and the rest of the you know, and the rest of the thing in fact this is kind of why Hollywood went on strike, wasn't it? Because they've realised now that everyone can start using their images and pretending to make films and making different films. So this is where we are with the world at this moment in time. It's going to be an interesting year with artificial intelligence because the big thing is, is because it's now so cheap, everyone can start doing it. Of course, that is the biggest worry. That is yeah, it's a concern for many people. Uh, Megan, just, just briefly, if you will, because we're nearly running out of time, but the main sort of things that people would do just to make sure that they're safe or that information's safe, you were mentioning earlier just about making sure things are private. Yeah, um, actually, the NCC website, that is my go-to. I, I work in a company that goes... It, it's very close relationship with the NCC and I always go to their information. But other things like MFA and free random words for passwords... That helps as well, um, but no, it's really just training your eyes. Like, like, like um, your other caller said, it is training you to look for things that that don't always look a hundred percent real. Or uh, and that's checking the websites for the email addresses is a great idea as well. Okay, thank you very much for that, both of you, uh, Megan Pierce, cybersecurity expert, and Dan Sodegren, AI and tech expert. It is tricky, isn't it, to know exactly what's real and what's not? But great advice from both Megan and Dan.